Hello world, it's Will. I'm in my office and I'm playing with computers. I wanted to do an update to my uh, 68030 uh, Retro Brew computer system video. I've made some improvements and um, I wanted to talk about them. The first big improvement is I've built a second uh, I.O. card. The first I.O. card, this one here, has an interrupt controller, a UART, uh, an 8255 used as an IDE interface, and a uh, DS1302 real-time clock. The new card is a sort of reduced version of that. In fact, it's exactly the same printed circuit board. It emits the um, interrupt controller, because you can only have one in the system, and it emits the real-time clock, because there's no point having two in any system. Uh, it adds another UART, and it adds another 8255, which again is used as an IDE interface with a compact flash adapter. Um, because the uh, clock crystal is used only by the UART and not shared with the interrupt controller, it's possible to use a much higher frequency clock crystal. So this one has a 1.8432 megahertz crystal, and this one has a 16 megahertz crystal, which means that this UART can achieve uh, board rates of up to 1 million bits per second. Uh, one other change in this version of the hardware is that uh, this UART uses a MAX232 uh, to derive RS232 uh, level signals. This UART is connected directly to an FTDI to uh, TTL uh, serial adapter, and then that is soldered uh, to the uh, footprint where the MAX232 would normally collect. This is quite a good idea because it means you save the cost of the RS232 line driver. And additionally, the RS232 line drivers can be uh, slew rate limited, which can limit the maximum board rate you can achieve. With, with this system, you can get to very high speeds without any uh, issues. So here's the assembled system. Once again, we've got the uh, 68030 CPU and memory board. We've got the primary multifunction pick board, which has the interrupt controller. This has the uh, boot device for the system, and it has the um, system console on an RS-232 uh, pigtail, which again is connected through a null modem cable to an RS-232 adapter and onto my computer. Uh, the secondary um, I.O. board sits at the back here. The USB interface on it is connected directly to my computer. Okay, so let's turn on the machine. There we go, the ROM's running now. It's loading Linux into memory uh, from the compact flash card. So I've made some changes to the kernel. One of them is it now supports multiple uh, MF PIC cards, which is uh, how I get this additional UART and the additional IDE interface. You can see the kernels just found those and initialized them. Um, another change I've made is uh, I found there was a, a fault in the NS32202 uh, interrupt controller chip under high uh, interrupt rates, it would sometimes return the wrong um, interrupt vector to the CPU. So I've implemented a workaround for that. Um, I've also uh, implemented higher resolution, a higher resolution clock. So it's now possible for the kernel to read out the uh, value of the timer in between timer interrupts, which means we can get higher, a higher resolution idea of time. Um, the other big change I've made is that the uh, boot process is now significantly faster. I replaced the standard Debian uh, startup process with a single shell script that just runs what's necessary to bring this machine up. And consequently, whereas the machine used to take about 10 minutes to boot, it now boots in approximately a minute. So I think we're about to get, there we are, there's a login prompt. It's been about a minute since we powered on the machine, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's log in. There we go. So I'm using the second um, UART on my machine, the second serial port, uh, for a PPP link. The uh, PPP, or point-to-point -point protocol, uh, is a way of carrying IP packets over uh, serial lines, and I'm using it for a serial link from my uh, 68030 machine to my desktop computer. So we can see there the PPP link is up and running. Uh, if I try and ping something on the internet, there we go. You can see that works pretty well. And um, you can tell from the timestamps it's printing out that we've got um, better time resolution than we had before. The interrupt timer on this machine ticks every uh, hundredth of a second. So normally we'd have 10 millisecond accuracy, but with the um, high resolution uh, clock patch, we can get um, 
better accuracy than that without increasing the timer interrupt rate. Um, now that we have an internet connection, of course, we can run all sorts of fun on the machine. So I have a, um, uh, a telnet daemon running, so you can telnet into the machine. I also run SSHD, so you can actually SSH into the machine. So this is a shell on my uh, workstation. From here, I can telnet over the PPP link into the 68030 machine. You can also SSH in. The um, authentication for SSH takes about 10 or 15 seconds. Um, and then it's very slightly laggier than Telnet because it has to encrypt everything before it gets sent over the PPP link. Uh, they both work well. And actually, SCP um, is my preferred way to transfer files in and out of the machine now. Uh, so now we're logged in. Let's have a look. Here we go. We can run programs. So this program uh, computes the Mandelbrot set and prints it out in pretty colors on your terminal. Um, it actually runs uh, using uh, floating point instructions, native floating point instructions. The um, machine doesn't actually have a floating point processor, coprocessor, so they actually get uh, picked up and emulated by the floating point emulator in the kernel. There we go. Um, and of course, we can run uh, the, all of the most important application for any computer running uh, Z uh, machine games. There we go. If you've never played Curses, by the way, it's a fantastic game. Um, so that's it, the 68030 with uh, networking and with some other uh, improvements, faster booting, that sort of thing. It's getting better all the time. Um, next, I'm going to add drivers for a new quad UART board that uh, John has designed. And I'm also going to try building up a uh, dual IDE board and, if I get time, a dual SD card board as well and get some drivers for those written up. So, uh, yeah, happy hacking. Hope you're all having fun. And um, I'll do another video when I've got something else to report. Bye-bye.